Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Party Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion which you might be able to see around me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I want to talk about a succulent and it's not something that I talk off a lot on my channel. I generally tend to be more focused on the aroids of the Araceae family and it would be things like philodendrons and anthuriums and things along those lines. Today I want to talk about a very cool plant, one of the granddaddies of all house plants and it is the Crassula ovata or the jade plant or the money plant or the Chinese money plant. And this is a plant that a lot of people have probably seen in Chinese takeaway stores and it's usually big, it's usually the size of a tree. I have got a picture somewhere that I took from a nursery, from a plant nursery that had got a tree version of this. If I can find it, I will put it here. I'm not entirely sure if I will, but if I do, it's, it's gonna be a really cool picture to have here because you can see the size that this plant can get to. Now, this is a relatively small plant and it has remained relatively small for me. It's constantly growing, it's growing at a relatively slow rate and that is something to bear in mind for the Crassula ovata. It is a slower growing plant, but if I show you what the stems look like, they do look a bit like tree trunks and they do go brown and harder when it's more mature. And obviously the very top, the stems are quite soft and well, it's not soft, it's still a succulent plant. So they're still a bit snappy, if that makes sense. Um, but a very, very cool plant. I think mine doesn't have, sometimes you do get like red leaf margins, mine doesn't. The other thing that you might notice and hopefully we'll pick it up. I'm trying to see if I can show you an example of it there on some of those leaves. I don't know if it's gonna pick up. There's usually some white speckling and the speckling that you'll get on the leaves is from salt and mineral deposits from the water. So potentially it might be that you've, you're in a high or in a hard water area in your locale, or you might be over fertilizing this. This doesn't need an awful lot of fertilization. It is obviously a succulent. The leaves are very succulent, but that's what causes it. It won't harm the plant. It's just something that will generally happen. And a lot of the times you can just take your finger, wipe it clean, or even just use a wet cloth and it will kind of come off. It won't really harm the plant. But this is one of those plants that does have uh, a historical, Kind of significance to a certain population and I think as the name might suggest one of the common names of Chinese money plant is this is a plant that I think if I'm not mistaken in the Far East is believed to bring good luck and you should grow it because it will bring good luck whether or not it's because of the color the fact that it's quite a hardy plant I don't know but it's always nice to find certain plants that have got such a strong significance to certain nations and there's a bit of history that goes on behind that as well. Another one that's like that that has got a bit of a story, not a history necessarily behind it, is the Pilea peperomioides, which is another plant that's considered the money plant, which is the one that looks like UFO discs and that comes off the spokes of the main stem. That's got a story that comes in from originally from China, but through a nanny or an au pair in Sweden, people liked it and it was a friendship plant and people gave it around. So that's a different story. I can do a, I can do a video if you want on the Pilea peperomioides. It was a plant that a lot of people were trying to get many years ago or a couple of years ago now, um, but it's become a lot more readily available for everybody. So if you do want a bit of a video on that one, let me know in the comments down below and I will do one of those. But with this, it is a succulent, it can get sun stressed as well. I had a very, very close friend of mine who is half Chinese actually, and she was freaking out because she was just like, it's gone red and I think I've killed the plant. And she'd obviously had it somewhere and I don't think I've ever been able to achieve this with my plant and it gets very, very bright light. I don't know where she had hers, but the whole thing had turned into a, a ready orange uh, color basically because it was getting sun stress, it was getting too much light. So bear that in mind, it does like bright light from a window. So probably a Southern exposure in the Northern Hemisphere. The opposite, obviously, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, but very, very cool plant. So it will sun stress as well. It's like any other succulent. So for instance, if I was to snap off one of these leaves and just lie it on top of the soil, it would potentially root in and then grow a new plant from that one leaf. But as with most things, I don't think people are aware of this. We've talked about this on my channel previously 
for aroids, but I don't think I've ever talked about it for succulents. It's always a good idea whenever you're kind of taking any cutting to propagate, make sure that you're taking that cutting, even from a succulent, even if you're snapping off a leaf, a few days after you've initially watered the plant because that's given that plant enough time to absorb that moisture into the rest of the stems and the leaves. So there's that leaf or that node, if you're doing it on aroid, when you cut it off, it'll have more moisture in it in order to kind of give it the best chance to root successfully and create a new plant for you. But yeah, really easy plant to take care of. This is in a plastic pot, believe it or not, in a decorative pot in the cash po. Um, the soil that's in this is a cactus and succulent soil mix that you can get from most uh, garden centers or plant stores. If, you really, if you're really worried that you might end up overwatering it, I would say amend that and maybe add in some perlite or maybe some extra sand just to make sure that it's really well draining. And with this plant, the only real way that you can kind of kill it is by overwatering. So make sure you're only watering it when it's bone dry and you can do that, then it will be fine. Sometimes the leaves will also start getting a bit softer and a bit more wrinkly. That's also a sign that the plant has stayed dry for too long and then you should probably water it at the same time as well. And yeah, in terms of fertilizing, obviously you've seen the white little salt deposits that you get on the leaves. That's something to consider, but this isn't a plant that's particularly uh, fertilizer hungry. So three to four times a year will probably be all that you really need for this plant and it will grow quite, quite happily. I'm trying to think what else doesn't need any high levels of humidity. Again, this is a great gift for people that are just getting into plants because this is relatively difficult to kill. It's also relatively forgiving if people forget to water it. So... This is another good one, potentially, if you're thinking about getting a plant for somebody, either for their birthday, for Christmas, for another holiday. This is a great one to give to somebody who's just getting into plants or even small kids as well. This is another really cool one to get for people as well. And this is a reason why a lot of these plants sometimes are in office buildings as well, because people can forget it and it's still gonna be there. It might have not have grown, but it's still gonna be there and it's still gonna be doing okay. So. Bear that in mind. But yeah, the Crassula ovata or the jade plant or the Chinese money plant, very, very cool one to get for a friend if they have never had a plant before and they wanna start getting on that journey as well. It's a relatively easier succulent as well. I know people always buy a succulent thinking it's an easy thing to take care of, but unless you know what you're doing with succulents, it's also quite difficult to kill them off. As I said with this one, as long as you don't overwater it, you should be good. It's relatively forgiving even with the light levels. Obviously don't have it in a very dark place, but it should be okay. As long as it's close enough to a window, it should be okay. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Any questions, comments, do drop them down below. Otherwise, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, bye.